Welcome to the uh, course introduction lecture for Psychology 231. My name is Kanoa Merriweather, and uh, let's begin. As I said, my name is Kanoa Merriweather. Uh, you don't have to call me Professor Merriweather. I'm not a doctor. You don't have to call me Dr. Merriweather. I have a master's degree in clinical psychology, so uh, you can call me Kanoa. You can call me uh, Instructor Merriweather. Um, my email is kanoa at hawaii.edu, and uh, my phone number is 808-966-7899. Uh, I ask that you please uh, respect that this is my home number. Uh, I live on the Big Island, and I don't have a cell phone because we don't get cell phone reception where I live. So this is my home number, and so I ask that you please respect uh, <laughs> the fact that you're calling my house and uh, limit your calls uh, to between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Uh, you can also, you know, if you need to reach me outside of those times or days, you can email me and we can set up an appointment. So a little bit about me. Uh, I was raised on the leeward coast of Oahu out in Makaha. And uh, I, uh, I actually um, <clears throat> did not graduate from high school. I actually wound up uh, dropping out in 10th grade because uh, I preferred surfing and uh, partying and that sort of stuff to uh, education at the time. So um, for those of you who have, who have also maybe followed that kind of a, a route where you had to get a GED and, and uh, that sort of thing, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't continue your education. And, and uh, so I uh, attended Leeward Community College and uh, then uh, transferred to UH West Oahu. So I'm an alumnus of UH West Oahu. Uh, from UH West Oahu, I got accepted into a clinical psychology program at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where I completed my master's degree in clinical psychology and earned a specialization in addictions. After that, I returned uh, back to Hawaii, um, where I worked at various agencies. Uh, Ho Maukeola is one of those. That's a substance abuse treatment facility out in uh, Waianae that uses a Native Hawaiian sort of sort of uh, uh, perspective in in helping folks to recover from substance substance abuse problems. Uh, I also worked at Kahi Mohala for several years, um, working with their severe and persistent mental illness program with people who were who had been arrested and uh, you know were judged to be. Uh, unable to uh, participate in their defense and unable to be charged with crimes and that sort of thing. Uh, and then also have worked for the State Department of Public Safety in the uh, Corrections Department, worked at a prison, and um, that is uh, uh, not something I would like to return to, let me tell you. Uh, I've been teaching at UH West Oahu since 2004. I currently, as I said, I live on the Big Island, uh, I live over on Kilo side. And um, I teach all my courses online through distance education. My interests are Rogerian therapy, which is also called humanistic therapy, uh, of course, substance abuse counseling, but also sociocultural conceptions of substance use and uh, drug policy. Yeah, uh, so, you know, of course, I teach a lot of the courses that are in the substance abuse counseling uh, certificate, um, teach, uh, you know, a few other courses like counseling skills and, and uh, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about me. So the course that we're dealing with today, uh, this summer, is physiological psychology. And so, of course, we're going to be dealing with the biological basis of both normal and abnormal behavior, right? All of our behavior is based on, on our biology, yeah. So the focus is going to be on those sources of the behavior, which are the brain and the nervous system, yeah. We're going to look at the structure of the brain. We're going to look at the chemistry of the brain. We're going to look at the function of the brain. And we're basically, uh, you know, you're going to have an introduction to the foundational domains of physiological psychology. So that includes things like neurophysiology and neuroanatomy, right? So you understand, you know, what parts of the brain are what and what they do. Uh, we're going to give you an introduction to sensation and perception, you know, our five senses uh, and uh, how... You know, the difference between sensation, sensation is just the activation of a sensory organ, yeah. Perception is the recognition and interpretation of that activation, right? So we'll talk about that. Um, throughout, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about research method, methods, uh, you know, uh, in various ways. We don't have a separate lecture on research methods because 
you know, uh, this is just an introduction and getting too heavy into it becomes uh, uh, very complex. We'll also talk about psychopharmacology, and that is basically the interaction of uh, chemicals and the, the brain. Yeah. We'll talk about motivation. We'll, we'll give you an introduction to the basic processes of learning and memory, uh, basic processes of evolutionary theory. And then uh, finally, we'll talk about biological systems that implement social behavior. Yeah. Where do we get our social behavior from in terms of our neurophysiology and our neuroanatomy and that kind of thing? The textbook for this course is a PDF. It's uh, from the NOBA project, right? And uh, you can look up nobaproject.com. Uh, they have um, all of the chapters and many, many more posted online with videos and clips and things like that. Uh, I've also posted our PDF, uh, the textbook in PDF format on the, on the website, so you don't have to pay for it. There's no charge. There's no, uh, no cost for that. Uh, the only other thing I'm including is the APA quick reference guide for you, and this is also a PDF that's free, uh, posted on the, on the Lao Lima uh, course website, and you can use that to look at you know, um, formatting issues for your uh, reflection papers. Uh, your, and we'll talk about the reflection papers, but you don't have to worry too much. You know, you're not going to be doing a whole bunch of, uh, of, of uh, you're not going to be doing big, long papers, and you aren't going to have to worry about things like headers and, and other APA uh, um, essentials. So this is an online course, and you know, you've know you already accessed this lecture, so you're already ahead of the game. Uh, this is going to be the format for the entire semester. You'll access these online lessons. Uh, they will stream for you. You'll be able to hear my voice, hear me talk about the material in the textbook and that sort of thing. Um, I'm also going to give you PDF handouts that have my lecture slides, so you don't have to try and recreate each lecture slide as you're, as you're learning. But I encourage you to hold on to, you know, print out those PDF handouts, have them in front of you while you're listening to my lecture so you can write down your questions, you can write down notes, uh, you know, little things that I say that you think might be important and that sort of thing. And also, if you want to contact me with a question about one of the lectures, it helps a lot if you can tell me um, I'm asking you about slide 8 or I'm asking you about slide 12. Yeah. Um, that, that way, that gives me a better sense for what your question is about, that sort of thing. So uh, remember that it's, you know, it's going to be on you to keep up with the schedule, to access and study these online lessons, to do your readings, to do all of the assignments in a timely manner. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to send out emails that, that tell you, hey, you've got two days before the next reaction paper is due or, or you know, your next reflection paper. Uh, you know, Everything's listed in the syllabus, and you're going to want to make sure that you refer to the syllabus frequently and keep up with all the assignments and things like that. Um, the UH West Oahu IT Help Desk, there for, uh, um, for you if you have technology problems and things like that. Of course, you know, um, what I suggest is if you have a problem with, the, you know, with, with some aspect of the technology in the course, you let me know. You send me an email and say, hey, I can't get this lecture to run or I can't get you know, uh, this film to play for me or, or whatever it may be. And, but, you know, you're also going to need to contact UH West Oahu IT Help Desk because they're the ones who are going to be able to fix the problem for you. But at least you let me know on Monday that you've been having problems with, the, with this lecture or with, or with that sort of thing so I can understand that, you know, if, you, if you've uh, got an issue that we need to deal with. So, uh, as I said before, you know, you have my home phone number here. Please uh, limit your calls to 10 to 4 on weekdays. Yeah, if you need to reach me in between, you know, at a different time or that sort of thing, then by all means, send me an email, and I'm more than happy to set up uh, a day and time that, that we can meet either by phone or we can do, like, Skype or, or you know, some sort of meeting or that sort of thing uh, on, online. So this course, you know, again, is a summer course, you know, everything's compressed. So you're going to have a lot of work to do in a short period of time. Each week, you're going to have weekly readings. The way that I've structured it is uh, we, have, we have six weeks 
we have 10 chapters. So what I've decided to do is we'll have an easy week at the beginning of the semester and at the end of the semester. Well, and when I say easy, you know, none of these are easy, but at least this first week, you've only got one chapter to read. And in the final week, you're only going to have one chapter, chapter 10, to read. Um, but but uh, from weeks two through five, you're going to have to read two chapters each week. Okay? Uh, so you read your chapters. You access your online uh, lessons. Uh, the lessons are going to talk about the material in the textbook. They should elaborate, explain, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then you're also going to have, uh, well, you're going to have a bunch of other stuff to do, but I think one of the things that most folks are most interested in hearing about are the quizzes. Yeah. So um, you're going to have a quiz each week, and this just makes sense because there's so much material to cover that, uh, you know, I want to make sure that, that you are able to uh, be tested on just the discrete material that's covered that week. Yeah. So um, rather than give you, you know, four chapters of material to memorize and that sort of thing, I'm going to try and keep it down to one to two chapters. Yeah. So this first week, the first quiz is only on chapter one. Yeah, it's only on neurons. You're going to have 20 questions that are going to cover uh, that chapter. Yeah. Uh, next week, quiz two is going to cover chapters two and three. Yeah. Uh, and so it's going to go on, you know, like that. Your, uh, your quizzes are all online. You don't have to go to a, a computer center. They are not proctored. That means that you can have your textbook open. You can have your notes open in front of you. Uh, the only requirement is that the work be your own. Yeah, you're not allowed to, to talk to other students to get, uh, you know, to discuss the quizzes and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, that's what the, uh, the honor pledge is about when you take the quiz. Okay. Each quiz is going to be worth up to 20 points. It's one point per question. And so that means that, uh, you know, because you got six quizzes, 20 points each, that's going to be 120 points total. And that's going to work out to be half of your course grade. That's 50% of your course grade. Let's look at the other requirements. Okay, so uh, before we get to the other requirements, let me give you a little bit more information about the quizzes. Um, they're going to be every Friday, open from 8 a.m. to 11.55 p.m. on Friday. Okay, uh, and uh, so you know you can go in there, access them anytime in between the, in between 8 a.m. and 11.55 p.m. Um, but but you only have one hour to take it. So if you, if you open the uh, quiz at 11.30 on Friday, it's going to close at 11.55 p.m. And if you don't have it finished and all of, your, all of your questions saved, it's going to cut you off and not save any of your questions. So you need to make sure that you log in to take the, the, uh, the quiz at least an hour, at least by 10.55 if you want that full hour uh, to complete it. Remember that the quizzes are not cumulative. Each quiz only covers the material that's assigned in the readings, lectures, and discussions for that week. Okay? Uh, it, each quiz is 20 multiple choice questions. You've got a one hour time limit, which is more than fair. Uh, and again, these are open book uh, quizzes. Yeah? Uh, you are responsible for being familiar with the test taking program and for saving your answers while completing the quiz. There are loud Luma tutorials that you can, that you can read or, or watch the video of that will talk about the test taking programs. And that will, you know, that's, that's your responsibility to understand how the test taking program uh, works. Yeah. Um, once quizzes are done Friday night, uh, Saturday, I will release the results. Yeah. So um, you'll, you'll be able to see what your results are roughly, uh, usually uh, before 24 hours have passed after the quiz deadline. We've also got weekly class discussions. So, you know, um, <clears throat> each week you're going to have a discussion prompt posted on the discussion board. It uh, might require you to build, view a film clip or read, a, read an article, so make sure that you give yourself a chance. You know, I, I recommend that folks take a look at those on Mondays or so. I don't know that I'm going to have them all posted before the semester starts. So, um, But for sure, uh, you know, by, by Monday you're going to have uh, that week's discussion. Uh, topic posted. So you want to make sure that you get a jump on those because you're going to have your quizzes on Fridays as well. You don't want to have to do both the quizzes and the discussion posts uh, all on the same day. So 
highly recommend folks try and get their discussion posts done early so that they're able to focus on the quiz on Fridays. When you're doing a discussion post, uh, your discussions have to be at least 150 words in length. And um, believe me, I will uh, I will count the words. Yeah, I have a, a you know word count program or whatever it is. Um, so you know, uh, it doesn't have to be 200. It doesn't have to be 500 words in length. It just has to be uh, over 150 words. Okay. You also want to make sure that your post uses complete and grammatically correct sentences. So don't do bullet, uh, don't do you know bullet posts. Don't do uh, fragments of sentences. And if you struggle with grammar, you're going to want to make sure that you check your grammar before you post it because you will lose points if you post grammatically incorrect sentences. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and also spelling. Yeah. Uh, now, I misspell words sometimes myself. I, I don't ding folks on, on every little misspelled word, but if, it, if it's a pattern, if it's very frequent or that sort of thing, then you're going to be uh, losing points because... Um, you know, it's it's one thing to you know struggle to to spell committee correctly, right? Um, but uh, you know, we have all these tools at our at our disposal to make sure that we're that that our spelling is correct and that our grammar is correct. So you're going to want to use those tools. Finally, um, your post needs to meaningfully respond to the topic. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes students go off on a tangent. You know, they start talking about things that are unrelated, politics or religion or whatever. Um, you know, what we're talking about here is physiological psychology. We're talking about the function. We're talking about neuroanatomy. Um, you know, so, you know, uh, make sure that your response is, is specific to the discussion uh, topic at hand. Yeah, because if it's not, you're not going to earn points for it. Remember again, your deadline for the discussion post is 11.55 p.m. on Fridays. And, uh, you know, that's going to be every Friday, every week, until the end of, until the, end of the summer session. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes, as I said, you're going to have to view a film clip or read an article before you post your discussion. Uh, so you want to give yourself time. And, again, I recommend that you check them on Monday. Yeah. When I grade your discussions, each one is going to be worth up to 10 points. And what I'm looking at is the accuracy of the information that you have there. Are you accurate in describing the, the film clip or the article uh, that I asked you to read or the, or the uh, topic that I posted on? Are you, uh, you, know, are you demonstrating then uh, comprehension of these concepts that are being discussed and logical reason, right? So, you know, the idea is that you want to, you want to demonstrate that you understand the relationship, for example, between uh, neuroanatomy and and uh, our behavior, right? Uh, you know, um, to understand things like uh, the difference between sensation and perception, right? And so, like for example, we can't perceive some perceive something um, before we've sensed it, yeah. And that's just logical reasoning. Your your sensory systems have to be activated, right? Um, uh, and then we have to recognize that there's an activation in order for perception to happen. Yeah. So if you talk about uh, things in the other direction, if you talk about perceiving something before you sense it, that's not logical. That does not demonstrate comprehension of concepts that are being discussed, and that's not going to earn you points. Yeah. And then finally, accuracy of grammar, spelling, use of the complete senses, and that sort of thing is, is going to be worth three points. So. Uh, you know, if your grammar is really atrocious, if your spelling is really bad, and, and, you know, you're not posting complete sentences, you can pretty much write those three points off, okay? Next requirement are the brief reaction papers. So I've uh, assigned three films in the course that are going to elaborate on topics that are covered, and um, I'm asking students basically to watch the film, and then summarize the information in the film in, in your paper. Explain the relationship of the information that's in the film to the class topics that we cover. Yes, when we're talking about evolution, right, you're going to have a film on the evolution of the brain. Uh, I'm asking you to basically give me a brief summary of what does the film talk about, what, you know, what are the main points of the film. Then I want you to explain how those main points are related to the information in the chapter in the lecture about evolution of the brain. Yeah. 
And then finally, I'm expecting you to provide your perspective on this material. Um, what do you find compelling about this material? Uh, what is new about this material? How do you see this uh, informing other aspects of psychology or other aspects of, of anatomy or biology or that sort of thing? Yeah. So um, I'm asking for two pages. Yeah. Uh, you don't get more points for going longer, but you uh, you will definitely lose points if you only turn in one page. Yeah. Uh, the two pages are for the body. So um, you you know I'm assigning these papers in APA format, APA style. And what that means is you need to have a cover page for your for your for your paper. So a two-page reaction paper should be three pages long because it will have a cover page on it. On that cover page, you should have your name, the university name, the course name, and uh, the date. Yeah. Uh, oh, and also also have the title of the film that you're doing the reaction paper on. Yeah. So. You don't have to do headers. You don't have to do abstracts. You don't have to do a uh, you know an APA style um, uh, citation for the film or anything like that. But uh, APA style means that you have 12 point font. You have double spaced uh, 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 text with one inch margins all around. Yeah. Uh, and then you know if issues come up and I have to give you more uh, direction regarding APA style, I will. Usually this this is enough. Uh, your papers are going to be due also at 11:55 p.m. on Fridays on the week they're assigned, and they're assigned every other week. Yeah, so this week you don't have a reaction paper, but next week you will. Right? Each reaction paper is worth up to 20 points. I grade your reaction papers based on the accuracy of the information that you provide. Yeah, uh, and you know, asking you to summarize the information in the film accurately. To explain how that information relates to the class topics accurately, those sorts of things. You're also going to be graded on your accuracy of APA style. If you've got margins that are 1.25 inches rather than one inch, you're going to lose points. Yeah. If you've got 13 point font or 11 point font, uh, if you've got single spaced uh, text rather than double spaced text, those are the things that you're going to lose points for for the APA style. Then finally, you're also being graded on your comprehension of the concepts being discussed and the demonstration of logical reasoning in your discussion. Yeah, uh, so you're uh, you can earn you know 20 points per paper. That's up to a total of 60 points for three papers. That's 25 percent of your course grade. And here are the papers that are due. So next week, your first paper, reaction paper one, is going to be based on the film. Uh, the Brain with David Eagleman, What is Reality? Yeah. And I think that's about an hour long, I want to say 55 minutes or so. Um, all these films are available on YouTube, and you can use these links to, you know, you can copy and paste them into your uh, browser to, to get there. Uh, the second reaction paper is on the evolution of the human brain, and uh, that's also, you know, again, on YouTube. And then finally, a uh, third reaction paper is based on uh, Chapter 10, which is... Uh, social neuroscience and so the film is neuroscience and the roots of human connections the social synapse yeah. okay the the uh, the syllabus covers all of the academic policies and uh, notifications that you see listed here credit hour requirements academic honesty non-discrimination title IX notification those sorts of things really quickly if uh, you know you have a disability and you need an academic accommodation for testing or note taking or that sort of thing, you have to contact disability services as soon as possible. You need to speak with the ADA coordinator, Tom Hurstbrenner. Yeah, uh, and so um, you can access the disability services website. You can call them at 808-689-2935, uh, or you can email uh, Mr. Hurstbrenner at hawaii.edu or there's his, uh, his email there, um, but uh, you need to be identified through uh, the disability services folks before we can offer you any kind of accommodation, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, if that's a concern for you, you're going to have to work with Mr. Hurstbrenner and the disability services folks to get, to get yourself uh, uh, set up. Some course policies here. You know, um, I think these are pretty straightforward. Uh, 
Uh, students are responsible for following the syllabus and the course schedule. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I hate it, but but uh, every once in a while I have students who really struggle to follow the course schedule, and it's just it's not fair to the other students who do. Um, you know, to ask for extensions and to ask for, you know, uh, can I redo this or can you please let me earn a few more points because I didn't do this or that. Uh, you know, the course is, is structured in a certain way. And if you're not able to follow that structure, then, you know, um, I'm not going to change all the rules and bend over backwards uh, in order to make my course suit your lifestyle. Okay. Uh, so. As far as late papers go, uh, if you turn in your paper late, you're going to have to email it to me because the, uh, the website will stop accepting uh, papers after the, after the deadline passes. Okay? So if you miss the deadline, you're not going to be able to post your paper on the website. You're going to have to email it to me. Yeah? And um, so you're going to lose five points for each 24-hour period past the deadline. So if you are two days past the deadline, that's 10 points. If you're three days past the deadline, that's 15 points, right? So very important that you get those papers done and turned in on time. Uh, late discussion posts will also be penalized. You're going to lose two points per 24-hour period past the deadline. And again, you're also going to have to email me your discussion posts uh, because the, the forum is going to lock at the, at the, at the due date. Uh, and then finally, um, I expect every student to see me as a resource. Yeah? Make appropriate use of email and phone to, to get your questions answered, to help clarify the readings and the lecture materials, um, to just talk about what concerns you have, whatever that may be. Yeah? Um, that's what I'm here for because we don't have class sessions, uh, you know, because this is an asynchronous course so that people can you know, work and, and deal with their lives and, and you know, access you know their education whenever possible. Uh, you know, it's it it sometimes becomes kind of chaotic and messy for folks. So I want to make sure that I'm the home base for you. Yeah. Uh, so I want you to contact me with questions, with concerns, those sorts of things. I don't want you to suffer by yourself and say you know uh, and worry about well what if what if the instructor doesn't like my question or what if the instructor feels like I'm I'm, uh, you know, interrupting them or that sort of thing. As long as you're calling between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, or you're emailing me and asking for another time to meet and that sort of thing, I've got no problem. I will take as long as it takes to explain things to you and to make sure that things are clear. Yeah. My goal is for every single one of my students to earn an A in every single one of my classes. Yeah. Um, I do my best to structure my classes so that that's not an unattainable goal, but um, I can't do the work for you. Yeah, But know that I want you to succeed. I want you to do well. I'm not here to try and keep you from earning the best grade that you can. I'm here to, to help you to attain the best grade that you can. And then the course policies uh, sort, of, sort of here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so everybody has to has to follow the UH Bus Wahoo guidelines on appropriate online behavior and communication. That includes me, and that includes you. Yeah. So um, some of the big issues here: use of discussion boards, chat rooms, email uh, for things that aren't related to class-related issues is unacceptable. Okay. So you know, solicitation, asking folks to buy fundraiser tickets or join your group or church or cult or whatever. Those things are prohibited. Even, you know, I mean, I know it might just be, hey, I'm looking for folks to join my canoe club or, or whatever. Um, this isn't the appropriate format for it. Yeah. And if you have questions about it, if, um, you know, there are some things that are okay, right? Like, for example, sometimes I have senior project students who want to give out surveys or that sort of thing. And I'm always happy. Uh, to allow them to, to distribute surveys to my classes, to my online classes. And it's up to the students if they want to participate or not. Yeah. Um, but in general, you know, uh, use the discussion boards just for their purpose. You know, um, use the email just for communicating about class and that sort of thing. If, uh, you know, and of course, if you want to communicate with me about anything, feel free. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't 
you know, ask me if I want to buy a fundraising ticket, I'm going to say no, but you can always ask me. That's, you know, that's, that's part of uh, free communication, yeah? Also important to note that we all need to demonstrate respectful communication, yeah? Um, between, you know, between students, with students and instructor, you know, uh, and I expect all students to abide by the UH West Oahu Student Code of Conduct, yeah? It's vitally important for me to treat you guys with the respect that you deserve. Yeah, uh, to me, students are are wonderful, fantastic people, and you know, um, these are folks who are trying to uh, improve their knowledge, improve themselves. Yeah, and that process makes the world a better place, it makes our, our community a better place, it makes our society a better place. So I respect you guys very, very much. Yeah. And I hope that all of my communication and that all of our contact uh, demonstrates that respect. Yeah, and if you ever feel that it doesn't, then please let me know. Yeah, um, and of course there are grievance procedures and those sorts of things that you can go through. But you know, um, I do. I, re I respect you guys very much, and you know, I'm, I uh, I just hope that you respect each other and me as well. But enough of that folder all, let's talk about the important stuff, which is the grading criteria and distribution. Yeah. So your assignments this semester, three reaction papers, six discussions, six quizzes. Yeah. Your reaction papers are worth 20 points each, total 60 points, and that's one quarter or 25% of your course grade. Your six discussions are worth 10 points each, that's another 60 points and a quarter of your course grade. And then finally, your six quizzes are worth 20 points each. That's worth a total of 120 points, or 50% of your course grade. It all works out to 240 points total. Yeah. You are graded based, uh, your letter grade, your course grade, is going to be based on the number of points you accrue throughout the semester. And that's it. There's no curve. There's no weighting. I don't play games with, you know, um, this was a harder assignment than that was, or one thing or another. You know, it's just about uh, putting your nose to the grindstone, getting getting your work done, and doing the best job you can with each one. Right. So you have all these options to earn, all of these opportunities to earn points, and you want to put your best foot forward and earn as many points as possible because that's what translates into your final grade. So this this table here gives you your course letter grade on the left. And then on the far right, you have the percentage of points that you have to earn and the number of points. Okay, so to earn an A in this course, which is considered excellent achievement, you've got to earn at least 93% of the points that are available. So 93% of 240 points is 223. So if you earn 223 points, you're going to get an A. Yeah, if you earn if you earn anything over 223 points, you're going to get an A. Right, uh, and then it goes down in you know based on the percentage that you earn. If you earn 90 points, that's 216 points, you're going to get an A minus, right? If you earn 88 points, which is 211 uh, points total, you would get a B plus, and it just goes down that way, yeah. All right, now, now we're on to the course schedule. So what I've done is I've done my best to really sort of uh, try and make each week very similar, yeah. You're going to have um, several assignments each week, uh, but they're all, you know, uh, each week is, is going to hopefully, uh, you know, fit the same sort of structure so that you aren't going to have to make a lot of adjustments and that sort of thing, yeah? So week one, this week, you've, you're almost done with the course introduction lecture, which is, which is great because you're, you know, you're making good progress here. Um, if you haven't read the syllabus yet, you're going to want to make sure that you read the syllabus. Uh, read chapter one and then access uh, lecture one on neurons, and uh, then you've got discussion one that's due on Friday, quiz one that's due on Friday, and that's it. Yeah. So this is kind of an easy sort of introductory uh, week, right? Uh, because we've only got one one uh, chapter's worth of material to go through. This will hopefully give you a chance to kind of get yourself uh, set up, get everything organized get ready to power through the next, uh, uh, the next four weeks um, of two chapters each week and a whole bunch of other stuff to do, yeah. So next week, week two, you've got two chapters. You're going to have to read uh, 
uh, chapter two, which is the brain, and chapter three, which is the nervous system, access the lectures for those two chapters. You're going to participate in discussion two. You're going to complete quiz two, and don't forget reaction paper number one that's going to be due on Friday, uh, the 12th. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> remember that's going to be due at 11:55 p.m. And I don't know that I mentioned it when I was talking about the reaction papers. I know it's I know it's on the slide, but uh, be sure that when you submit your papers, your papers are in either Word, PDF, or rich text format. Yeah. And that's because those are the file formats that I can open and read. If I cannot open your paper, it's going to be considered late, and you're going to lose points for it. Yeah. So that's another good reason for reading the syllabus. Uh, you know, it's it's listed there clearly. It's also listed on the slide, and uh, it'll also be listed in the assignment uh, when you go to post it. There, that'll be part of the instructions is to make sure it's either Word, PDF, or rich text format. Okay. On week three, you're going to want to read chapters four and five. Chapter four is sensation and perception. Chapter five is consciousness. You're going to access the lectures for those two chapters. You're going to participate in discussion three and complete quiz three uh, by Friday, 11.55 p.m. On week four, you've got two more uh, chapters. Uh, chapter six is psychopharmacology. And, uh, you know, that's talking about how the brain uh, uh, interacts with various chemicals, right? How chemicals... Uh, uh, impact the brain to cause changes that then change our experience and our behavior. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about evolutionary theory, which is also the topic of the film for your reaction paper, uh, reaction paper two, two that is uh, going to be due that Friday. And again, of course, you know, you've got your discussion four, your quiz four. Yeah. So week four, discussion four, quiz four, reaction paper two. On week five, Two more uh, chapters. Chapter 8 is drive states. Chapter 9 is hormones and behavior. Uh, you're also going to be participating in discussion 5 and completing quiz 5. Then uh, the final week, week 6, you've only got one chapter to read. That's social neuroscience. That's chapter 10. You're going to participate in your final discussion. You're going to complete your final quiz. And your final reaction paper is also due that Friday by 11.55 p.m. Okay, so um, very straightforward uh, schedule. It is a lot of work, but not when you consider that this is a three-month course jammed into six weeks, right? So everything's been compressed. So that's going to do it for your course introduction lecture. I want to thank you all very much for attending and for, and, and for uh, you know, hopefully paying attention and getting something out of it. Um, I encourage you to get a jump on the semester by reading ahead as best you can. Uh, you're also going to want to take some time to identify any technological issues you have with lectures or handouts or films on the class website. You know, spend a few minutes clicking on things and pulling things up and making sure that they work and that sort of thing. Uh, you're going to want to start thinking about uh, the discussion topic for this week. Start thinking about your, you know, uh, what you think about it. Do the reading if there's a reading for it. Uh, you know, and don't don't put that off because that's you know Friday comes really fast. Yeah. Uh, review any Lima tutorials that you need to. If you're not familiar with the exam procedures or the website functions or those sorts of things, that's what the Lima tutorials are for. Uh, contact me with any questions, with any concerns, that sort of thing. If you have uh, problems, technical problems, make sure that you contact the IT help desk. Send me an email so that I'm aware. Yeah, and uh, then you know the IT help desk typically is has uh, helped me within uh, uh, within 24 hours or so, um, except for a couple of uh, really complex issues. Um, but they're they're really good. And so so you know if you haven't had any contact with the UH West Oahu IT help desk, um, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at their speed and professionalism. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to have a really good semester. This is fascinating information, and I really hope that you that you uh, enjoy uh, the course and that you get a lot out of it. Again, if you have any concerns or questions, please send me an email. You can call me uh, on my home, home line between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And until lecture one, a hooey ho.